Well, Elon Musk will not be deposed by Twitter's lawyers today after both sides agree to a delay. Musk and Twitter are working to close a $44 billion purchase of the social media network after Musk tried walking away from the original acquisition agreement earlier this year. Musk has now committed himself to completing the offer on its original terms. So for more on this, we want to bring in uh, Jasmine Enberg. She is a principal analyst at Insider Intelligence, which is a market research company. So this is really interesting because he had been, we didn't know what Elon Musk was doing, right? We were surprised at the deal to begin with because right. he didn't do any due diligence and he mm. offered a higher price than anyone thought. And then suddenly he tried to back out of right. it. Uh, and, and then the fact that he's going forward at the original price is kind of shocking because he could have said, well, let's renegotiate. How about a little cheaper? But he didn't. Right. What do you make of Musk's sudden change of heart? Well, I think Musk and his lawyers have realized that buyer's remorse is not a good reason for walking mm -hmm. away from this deal. But the reality is, is now we're essentially back in the same position that we were in April when Musk first offered to buy Twitter. We are asking a lot of the same questions that we were asking back then. Now, the sooner this deal closes, the sooner there will be an end to some of the short term uncertainty that has been brewing at Twitter, both internally and externally. But there are still a lot of questions about what Musk intends to do with Twitter once he owns it. Right. So that's my question, right? What is the end game here? Uh, I mean, we know he's been very public about this, that he would, for example, allow former President Trump back onto he the might. platform. Yeah. Uh, that's something that he says he would like to do. He, uh, in, in public comments, has talked about the notion of censoring somebody yeah. um, is something that he doesn't, isn't supportive of. But do you really need to spend that kind of money uh, to make that point? I mean, so the question is, beyond that, beyond allowing former, Trump, uh, former President Trump uh, back onto Twitter, what else does he want to do with it? Well, there are still a lot of unknowns, but mm -hmm. Musk did give us a hint a couple of days ago mm -hmm. through a tweet where he said that buying Twitter was an accelerant to creating an everything app, which he was calling X. Now, if this sounds familiar, it should. This is similar to um, what Musk was talking about in terms of his plans for Twitter's, Twitter just a couple of months ago. Now, transforming Twitter into an everything app or a super app is not going to be an easy undertaking for Musk. He has praised WeChat in China and offered that as a, a roadmap for what Twitter might look like. Um, and in good news now, there are a few more building blocks at Twitter that might help Musk achieve this goal that didn't exist back in April, May, when he first started talking about this. Um, that Twitter has managed, despite the distraction of the Musk ordeal, to roll out some commerce-related products. They've also brought in some more immersive video experiences that they're testing. And all of these things would be part of this everything app that Musk um, is potentially envisioning for Twitter. Now, when he was trying to back out of the deal, one of his criticisms was that Twitter wasn't being transparent about the number of bots. I, this is a really interesting conversation yeah. because I uh, was talking about this on our morning show the other day. Uh, if you were to actually remove the bots from the accounts of people who have millions of followers, like, for example, his own account mm -hmm. or former President Barack Obama's yeah. account, or you would lose, like, millions of followers. I think Britney Spears would lose some 48% of her followers. So that's Barack really Obama would lose something like, you know, millions. I mean, it's really interesting. That is really interesting. So there's that. And Twitter's pushed back on that and said that's not the case and that they have provided him with all the data that he needs. But then we had this whistleblower come forward and say, hey, you know, they got issues with security as well. So the question is, with all this criticism and this back and forth about this deal, could this affect Twitter's ad business? Yeah, well, bots are a problem for pretty much all of the, the social platforms. And Twitter has never denied that there are bots on the platform. Um, and they're a problem for advertisers, too, because they're not able to accurately measure um, the impact of their campaigns. But Musk or no Musk, Twitter's ad business is in trouble right now. We saw signs of this already in its Q2 earnings. And at Insider Intelligence, we are about to release our updated forecast for Twitter's ad revenues. And I don't have the figures to share with you right now, but what I can tell 
tell you is that we are expecting a major downgrade to its ad revenue growth. Now, Musk, of course, has said that once he owns Twitter, he intends to make it less reliant on advertising. He has touted subscriptions as a potential revenue stream. Twitter right now does have a subscription service, Twitter Blue. Um, it isn't bringing in a ton of revenue for, for Twitter and its main business right now is ad revenues. And I will say that even if Musk or when Musk uh, changes Twitter's monetization model, it's going to take a long time for him to get rid of advertising altogether or even lessen the amount of advertising because Twitter is going to need to bring in revenue for the foreseeable future as well. So, so a lot of people have said that he's paying too much for this, yeah, right? That's, uh, um, Twitter employees were mad at the time. And the announcement came out when he was demanding that Tesla employees go back to the office. And right. he said some things about people who work. So they were all upset because they're like, right. what is he going to do to Twitter? Is he going to make us go back to the office? Um, but I guess, it, it, can this be considered a win for Twitter? Because it is the, he's certainly paying more than many people think that Twitter is worth. Well, I'd say it's too soon to declare a victory for Twitter just yet. I mean, this is certainly good news for Twitter, but there is still a lot of distrust surrounding this deal. I, I wouldn't blame Twitter if they didn't take Musk at his word at this moment, considering that he's backed out of the deal already once before. And there's also been a lot of internal turmoil at Twitter. There's a lot of people who have exited the company because of this ordeal. I do expect, though, that once Musk comes on board, there will probably be more people who are invigorated by him, who want to work for him, and will be able to bring fresh energy and fresh ideas to the company as well. And that leads to my question, uh, Jasmine, about uh, your analysis of who actually is on Twitter. Uh, I know we are. I know you are. I know people in the media and in the political space are. But I say this over and over again. Yeah. Any people in my family from my 18-year-old nephew to my parents who are in their 70s are not on Twitter. Yeah. People that I went to college with, so Gen Xers, some of them are on Twitter, but they're only there basically to follow accounts yeah. that they like, but they never tweet themselves. They don't have a lot of followers. Um, they don't buy anything based off of a recommendation that Twitter has. So I he wonder has, if... He has said that it's kind of like the town square, right? But if, but the, if there's nobody from town in there... I know, and I have thought the same thing. If the only I people thought, in town like, are us, even I don't if find you that interesting. look at the number of people on Twitter, right? And you go, well, what's the percentage of that? What's the percentage of the population who are on Twitter? Right. And then you and then you carve out the bots. And then you carve out the people who are like on Twitter but not really right. on Twitter. And then they, the media you know, people right. and DC and, like, insiders. Who's left? Right. Who's left besides like, you know, you know, you know uh, movie studios who push out content about like the newest films that are coming out or streaming. I just feel like it's not anytime I have a conversation with people about things that are bubbling on Twitter, they're like, oh, really? Yeah, I know, <laughs> I know. And that conversation would be often with me, actually. <laughs> You're like, are you following this Twitter exactly. thread? No. Exactly. So what does your analysis show you about who actually is on Twitter? So I think that's pretty fair analysis there. Uh, Twitter is a much smaller platform than, than Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter in terms of the number of users. But the users that it does have are incredibly loyal and they are incredibly mm. engaged, Musk being one of them. <laughs> now, true. that has always been Twitter's value proposition to advertisers. It has never touted itself as a platform that is as large as Facebook or as large as Instagram, but it has said that it has this high engagement among its core users, and that's something that is really valuable to advertisers, because the more engaged its users are, the more likely they're also going to engage with ads, click on ads, perhaps make purchases from those ads. Right. So, Jasmine, what you're saying, though, it, it, maybe I I'm, I'm, didn't understand you properly, but does it mean then that, yeah, Twitter loves people like Elon Musk or Kanye West because whenever they post something, there's lots of engagement, right? And Elon can talk up the latest Tesla, mm -hmm. right? Which Amory mm -hmm. has one, right? Like, and, you know, and, 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 but I wonder if, like, if he's talking about his vehicles or he's talking about SpaceX or Kanye is dropping a new album, that is what advertisers want to see. Yeah, but it's just like television. Like, you know, there's the number of people watching and then there's the demo. And I, I think uh, that what you're saying is maybe the numbers aren't there as, as much as it looks like it. Like Facebook. But the people that are engaged right. are devoted, they're focused. And if you're interested in that audience, then that's where you want to spend your advertising dollars. But Jasmine, you would know better than us. 
Yeah, it, that's absolutely spot on. That is exactly the, the value proposition that Twitter has, has offered to advertisers. And we've seen that it has had trouble growing its user base, its monthly user base um, over the past couple of years. But we saw something pretty interesting actually in its Q2 earnings. And that was a little uptick in engagement among its users. And I would say part of that probably has to do with the Musk saga. I think mm. we saw a lot of people who maybe didn't use Twitter as often before or hadn't used Twitter before for start signing into the platform to keep up with what was going on between Musk and Twitter. Yeah, anecdotally, I can say that that's accurate because uh, guys that I went to college with who were never on Twitter but are huge Elon Musk stands, like as soon as they realized he was buying Twitter, they jumped on Twitter, opened up their own accounts really? and everything. I know, this is anecdotal, but it supports what you're saying, Jasmine. Hmm. Fascinating. Yeah. Uh, Jasmine Enberg, come back. This was a really mm -hmm. fascinating conversation. Thanks so much for having me.